and welcome to our Bible study on YouTube. Um, our Bible study in Holy Week, it's Tuesday the 7th of April. And as I mentioned on Sunday, we're going to be looking at the Last Supper. And I've got four um, Bible readings to give you. I'm not going to read them through just because they're really, really long. Um, so the beauty of watching this now on YouTube is you can pause it and um, read, the, re read them through. If you want to read one of them, or for entirely obviously up to you. Um, if I give you them, hopefully, on the screen itself, um, it will come up to say uh, what your yeah, what, what the Bible references are. But just in case, I can't quite work the technology, I'll give them to you anyway. And obviously, if you don't catch it, then you can always rewind to hear it again. So it's Matthew chapter 26, verses 17 to 46. We've got Mark chapter 14, verses 12 to 41. Luke chapter 22 verses 7 to 46 and John chapter 13 verses 1 to 38. Now these passages are obviously absolutely jam-packed full and we could probably spend months just studying on these what just kind of few hours of Jesus's and his disciples um, part, part of their life. Um, but I'm just wanting to concentrate on what we call communion aspect of the, the Last Supper. So in our questions, to ponder, to think about, to do that. I just want to draw out just a few small points um, just before I kind of put the questions up onto the screen. Um, now, I don't really know an awful lot uh, about uh, Jewish traditions. Um, so this has just been kind of research that I have done that I've picked up. So hopefully all the information that I've got is correct. Um, but if it's not, then please do when you email in um, wanting to give some, some feedback. Um, to each other then please do mention if I haven't quite got it right so that that's perfectly fine I'm happy um, to be told on that respect um, so the Passover is a Jewish holiday of freedom and I guess we we kind of know that don't we when we think about Moses and the Passover the exodus of that kind of freedom from slavery uh, into uh, well not quite into the promised land but obviously into the wilderness anyway um, so I, I think when we look at this to begin with I'm kind of wondering, I'm trying to see it from the disciples' point of view, what do they think is going on? And just to kind of have a bit of a stab at it, I think they think it's just another, uh, and I say that positive, an another um, Passover that they're celebrating. And although obviously Jesus has spent, obviously we've had, we've had uh, Palm Sunday and we've had Jesus um, in, the, in the temple and in Jerusalem, doing a lot of teaching, a lot of talking about his death. Um, so obviously there is, obviously definitely something different happening uh, for, for this year for them celebrating uh, Passover um, but is it just another Passover that they, they think they're celebrating and then kind of life goes on whether there's that anticipation obviously Judas wanting to to, to to give Jesus a big nudge to say come on come and be our king obviously in, in a very different way than what Jesus what God has planned um, but let's say just a normal Passover celebration but Jesus took normal elements of this festival and put new meaning onto them. So I want to just quickly look at um, what they were and what they obviously now are. So when the Israelites learned that the Pharaoh had agreed to let them leave Egypt, um, they didn't have time to bake bread for their journey. Um, at least Pharaoh changed his mind. So we've got the, the bread part of the, 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 the symbol. Now I'm not going to try and pronounce anything in, uh, in Hebrew, um, but I think um, uh, the, the, the bread is called matzah. I think there is also a Hebrew name as well, and I'll leave you to, um, to tell me how that's pronounced. Um, so obviously um, they've got this bread that they've made that they haven't had time to put the yeast in <clears throat> to, to, to let it to rise, etc., now, this bread also, I found out, is called the bread of affliction. And I think, actually, for me, that was a kind of a bit of a kind of, oh, OK, maybe in what the disciples saw happening and Jesus taking this bread. Wow, there's something different going on here. Um, so for me, as a, as a non-Jew, to kind of understand the symbolism of what Jesus was saying. So, um, so they've got the bread of affliction, OK? And that the matzah, as it, I think it's called, pronounced, symbolizes the hardship of slavery and the Jewish people's hasty transition to freedom. 
okay and then the wine when jesus takes the wine it represents it was representing the redemption of the israelites from slavery under the egyptians so just to try to draw maybe some parallels for us today um to be honest i found it pretty impossible of of just how radical i think jesus was in taking a traditional festival and just if i say quite literally turning it on its head now i've come up with some some silly ideas maybe it's like presenting uh, beef on christmas day um maybe maybe not uh, maybe your favorite brand changing name or its logo um so for me snickers are still marathons and sif is still actually jiff um they, they try to change it but actually i know it from its its old name and is that what jesus has done okay it's not a good example but that, that concept of oh i find this awkward i find this difficult maybe i don't know what how the disciples actually felt of when jesus was, was doing this and maybe it was only till after after the resurrection and even maybe um when jesus ascended that actually they fully got what was going on during the, the these couple of hours but the big difference is that actually he makes it personal doesn't he that actually this now represents me, Jesus says. Now, this festival had been celebrated for about 1,400 years. And Jesus says, all that history, actually, it's now all about me. And I think there's got to be, has to be a big wow moment. And, and you know, a lot of struggle in kind of, whoa, change? Seriously? I'm not quite sure how comfortable I feel about that, Jesus. I don't know. We weren't there. Um, what I want to do, just before I set questions again, I just want to make a little note. Um, further on down, in uh, as I was reading it through Matthew, further on down, Jesus, uh, they're in the garden now. Jesus is going off to pray. The disciples have fallen asleep. Jesus comes back. He wakes them up. And he says to Peter, uh, he said, said a few things. And just at the end, he said, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Now, I just want to draw and just think about where we are at the moment, literally t today, right now in this coronavirus um, pandemic that, that, we're, that we're all kind of going through. And how true this is, I think, for us, that actually we have this opportunity as people being kind of saying, yes, this is your opportunity to get closer to God and, you know, you know do how th things around the, uh, around the house, etc., etc. But actually, um, I think that there's, a, there's this truth in it. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And I guess as a point of encouragement, for us that actually that we can do this with with the holy spirit we can get through this let me just scroll down so i've come to the end of my little bit of what i wanted to say um hopefully it's given you a little bit of food for thought just to begin with and the questions now are going to come up um the questions might be questions that you kind of relate to maybe not so but kind of i guess the concept of doing this is really to kind of um, to study uh, and to look at it for yourselves and it might be the fact you draw things out of this study that my questions haven't and that's, that's great that, that's perfectly fine um, but do feel uh, happy to email me back um, your kind of thoughts that I can then circulate around to others and as I've uh, I'll say I've said in the email um, that if you uh, oh sorry that within the email that obviously all the comments that I um, give back to everybody will be anonymous. Um, so we don't kind of know so-and-so that said this, so-and-so said that. Okay, um, so there we go. Um, do have a blessed rest of the week. And if I say look forward to seeing you on Good Friday where we kind of just spend um, just some moments really, just really reflecting um, on, on, on the sorrow absolutely but on the joy um that actually although um like peter sorry jesus said to peter the spirit is winning but the, the flesh is weak that actually jesus flesh was strong enough that he did do what he did for each and every one of us on good friday we'll see you soon